guest um, named Anthony Millian. If you don't know who he is, well, um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to educate you today. That's kind of his thing. He does these great loving videos about history that people don't talk about enough, really. And history from music has actually history, history itself. And um, yeah, how I got to know you was through your food videos, which was interesting. And then um, now that you're doing history, I'm just like, dang. Okay, so aside from the lovely intro, let's start with the nitty gritty. How long does it take you to research all the videos that you have done thus far? Oh, a while. <laughs> um, so that's the best way to put it. Like if I find a topic, so one thing that I've learned is to always dig deeper, right? So when I find a topic, you know, I don't want to give people a surface level, like analysis of what the subject is. I want to dig like one level deeper, sometimes two levels deeper. And sometimes like I'll find a name that's associated with the person that I originally or the concept that I originally wanted to talk about. And I'd be like, well, let's dig deeper into that. So I would say, I would say it takes me about two to three hours of just research. And wow. it's not just me sitting down, just doing the research for two to three hours. Cause you know, I have a life, family, kids. Um, yeah, of course, of course. So it's like, you know, make, making blocks of time available so I could do the research for the topics that I want to talk about. But I would say two to three hours. Oh, that's not that bad, mm -hmm. actually, in comparison. Yeah. But the thing is, is just um, how do you like, do you do like a syllabus for yourself or do you just do like PowerPoint? Like, you know, do you do points of what really should hit home or, you know, mm -hmm. like how so, would you... I'm sorry. Uh, so I do PowerPoints of like bullet points of things that I want to talk about. Okay. Um, I wish I was that advanced that I could make a syllabus. This is very fly by, not fly by the seat of my pants, but mm -hmm. it's not as advanced as, you know, what some, some people do. So like, I don't make a syllabus for myself. I'll find a topic and I'll jot a note down in my phone about it. Like, Hey, this is something I want to look deeper into or, you know, um, this is something that I think would benefit people more. And I try to keep my topics specific to like, whether it be African-American, uh, Caribbean, um, mm -hmm. Puerto Rican, Dominican, I try to keep my content, my, my concepts within that range. So. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's this thing called in terms of, um, the concepts, do you ever, like, for example, some people have, like, an aha moment mm -hmm. of, you know, I haven't talked about that. Maybe that's something that could, you know, draw an audience or maybe something that needs to be put out there. You never have mm -hmm. those type of uh, moments? Oh, yeah. I have those moments all the time. Like, I wish you could see the notes folder in my phone because I'm, like, I'll see someone. Like, one thing that I recently had an aha moment about is, like, Listerine, like the stuff for the antiseptic. The guy who created it was John Lister, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a black man who worked alongside him. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And like, these are concepts within history that people don't really ever talk about, you know? So, it, you know, I, I have aha moments like that all the time. Next, next one is Fabuloso and Mr. Ling. Look them up. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not supposed to boil Fabuloso. They like they're specifically there not to boil it. But listen, I do it all the time. <laughs> I just put in a little bit of hot water, you know, right? A little bit of like temp room temperature water, and just let mm -hmm. it just let it um you know sit let it marinate, and then just it, the smell just carries. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah. I, don't worry. I don't see anything like flying out and popping out like, oh, my God. <laughs> Socorro. Ah! None of that. Thank, thank you, gosh. Um, what I like historically what you've done is because um, <laughs> sometimes there's so much information you can give to the point that you're like, okay, cool. Okay, too much, too much. Right, 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 right. 
do you ever like catch yourself going, you know, this is going to like 30 minute territory, five minutes, maybe two, yeah. two and a half minutes would have been fine. So that happened to me quite a, it's not, I don't catch myself, but like if I'm working with a company, they will catch me. They will be like, listen, this is like, we appreciate it, but this you're doing too much. <laughs> So now I like I limit myself to like a minute, 30 seconds. Okay. I make sure all my content is within a minute to a minute and 30 seconds. Like, you know, just to make sure I'm not overwhelming people with the amount of things that I'm talking about. So this is true. I think. Um... Give me one second. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Can I pause the video? Uh, let me see. Hold on. There you go. OK. All right, let me just, okay, so as we were talking about, so you take two to three hours to do it, and then you have to um, time yourself to a, a literally 90 seconds, which is a minute and 30. Mm -hmm. um, would you ever do a 30 second thing? Could you limit yourself to do a 30 second? Oh, yeah. So I used to do, when I was doing TikTok, like... Mm -hmm. When, tic when TikTok was paying for the view, the watch time, like I was pumping out 30 second <laughs> videos like crazy. I would just get straight to the point and I would talk really fast. Like I did oh, no. one on, I would do, I did one on um, uh, the Parsley Massacre and I just, I got to it like within 30 seconds. Like I think it was a 45 second video um just like i've talked really wow. fast from start to from start to finish um and that's because like i was like oh you know i can make a little bit of money on this but now i actually you know i want to make longer content i want people to be more informed i want people to learn more mm -hmm. i haven't gotten to the point where i make 30 minute content or like 10 minute content just because i don't really have the time to sit down no, and make that but you know i start caring about the things that I put out there as far as the content goes and making sure that it's right and concise and complete, that it's going to take more than 45 seconds. It's going to take more than 30 seconds for me to do something that people will actually appreciate. No, sincerely. Um, I hope yeah, that when answered the question. When you're, creating me, when, when you're creating media, it's a very slippery slope because, for example, mm -hmm. like me, I have ADHD. Uh, it's really hard to straddle line between informative and borderline. You're over talking. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent correct. Because then you have to think. Okay, listen. Not everybody's just going to be like glued to and hanging on to every single word and syllable and consonant you're saying. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to like dial it back a bit. One hundred percent correct. 100%. And you know, so that's why I feel there's so much saturation mm -hmm. of content. And it's very difficult to keep your audience engaged and keep the content going. Because sometimes you get exhausted. There's burnout. And that's, that's a is. very real thing. Mm -hmm. Which is absolutely like, really? like For example, um, like the burnout and then you get into the depression. But then there's even like a chemical thing going on as you're consuming the media. Which is, oof. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like personally, I've gone through that. Like, you know, when my videos weren't performing well. I'm like, man, you know, my audience doesn't like me. People don't like me. And really, it's just like the algorithm. The algorithm is just not pushing your content. But, mm -hmm. you know, the way they formulate these algorithms, it's like they make it almost seem like it's personal. Like, you yes. know, oh, my no. my videos aren't doing well. People don't like me. I have to do more videos. And they, they get you in a cycle of like you're making or or you just stop, you know? It makes you feel like you're a hamster on a wheel and you're just like, and you take a break to drink water or to like just, okay, damn it, absolutely. no, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep going. Absolutely, horrible. absolutely. It's absolutely horrible, my goodness. Um, Like, um, it's vi right now, I think, um, we have a very sensitive yet informed culture, which is amazing going on right now. Yeah. It's like yeah. you have to be careful what you say. It's not 
what you say is how you say it. Even down to someone's tone, cadence, the whole gamut. You know, once like you're out there, you're out there. And it's right. like the Internet has a long and loving and hateful memory. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, people, you know, people want me to be like more opinionated, oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. when it comes to the work that I put out. And I don't really I really want to just push history as it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to interfere with things by giving my opinion on a specific, unless it's like a cut and dry issue, then you should already know where I stand. You know what I mean? But when you, when you start giving your opinion on controversial subjects, then all of a sudden, like it could go wrong really fast. And people, it's a snowball effect because you say something oh, yeah. that's controversial about a controversial subject. And then all of a sudden people label you and yeah. Especially the current events that are happening now, especially within the Middle East, I've seen so many of my friends that get labeled as like anti Semites. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I need to stay away from this because, you know, people, it's so quick. Mm -hmm. um, like, um, I would like to talk about instances, like for me, mm -hmm. of, um, like colorism, for example, right. um, like even in the family, like even down to like nicknames they call you, which right. is hilarious. And I'm just like thinking about it, I'm just looking at people like, uh, it's like, I love you, but mm, mm. didn't mind. Right. It's interesting as, as I get older, like the boundaries that I set, you know what I mean? Like when I was a kid, like I would let people get away with so much, but now that I'm older, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to yeah. speak to you again until you apologize to me about what you said, you know? Yeah. And I had to do that recently with a family member. Like, you know, you said something that really got under my skin. And when I called you on it, you had a negative reaction and you made, you blamed, you gaslit me. I'm of not going to, I'm not going to talk to you again until you apologize for what you said. And then of course, you know, you got the, the whole, why do I have to apologize? Right. You're too sensitive. You're too this. Right, you're right. Like, Again, oh, you're you, gaslighting you, me. Right. No, you knew me my, you've known me my whole life. You know that's how I am. You know, why Why are you acting like that now? <laughs> it's like, why Why? Why shouldn't I act? Right, I act? right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, come on. But, um, for example, okay, I'll tell you like this. I'm sorry. No, you can. I don't want to, can you edit this out? My son was behind me. Um, so to speak about colorism, for example, um, my grandfather, um, God rest his soul, mm -hmm. he used to call me Su Muñeca de Argodón. Oh, wow. I was like, A cotton doll. Exactly. Cotton doll. I was yeah. like, what? And then like my other sister, like my younger brother, he calls him Dimelo Indio. I was like, okay. Oh, wow. And then my other sister, who was like your complexion, but maybe like a tinge um, darker, Dimelo Morena. I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know what? It's just like, I'm lucky. We're lucky you're old. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> it just made you think, Concho. How did you skate by on life with all this, like, right. lovely, you know? Well, you, one thing is, like, I like to look at things through the context of, like, the way certain people were raised, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if he, I don't know, like, I don't know where your grandfather was from, but that, he was from DR, but I don't know where in DR he's from, but that could have been, that's customary. No, you know? of course, of course. And I've been you know, told by Dominican people, Dime lo Negro, like a lot. Like, yes, yes. You know? So it's like, it's something, it's a thing. And I don't, I, I think the meaning behind, there's no negative connotation or meaning behind mm -hmm. it. It's just a thing, you know? No, absolutely. <laughs> and it's just interesting because, like, even that, we don't extend that, um, I don't know. You know, we don't let our elders slide with it anymore. Right. You know I mean? Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And We're at a different time and they have to learn to adapt. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, who was it? Um, another time, this was really interesting. 
like I was in high school at the time and there was this um, person, she was a person of color. I don't want to like, you know, get into names and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Right. And someone said the word, very racist, by the way. Uh, oh, she's a Coca-Cola. Wow. I was like, okay. I was like, oh, dear. This is good. Right. When I heard it, I was like, oh, no. I just went, you know what? I got to go to the bathroom. I'll see you. <laughs> By the time That's I crazy. came back, she was in full, they- like, how dare you? Because she, uh, somebody basically told her that was the equivalent of the N-word. And she right. just went off. I was just like, oh, dear. Right, right, right. You got to be careful when you, especially with very specific terminology like that. Yes. You yes. have to be That's careful true. because if people can take that such a wrong way. Like, mm-hmm, 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 you know, mm-hmm. like when I refer, refer to like my, my dad's family, like they're from San Lorenzo, Hibaro. I refer to them as Hibaro. But like some people, if you meet a stranger and like, you say where they're from is, you know, like Hebrew, like they will take offense to that. You know, you oh, got to be careful. Okay. Oof. You got to be it's careful. Like, how dare you? Oh, my God. Right, right, right. And you're just like, <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, right. I said, you know what? I'm going to exit right over there. I have <laughs> exit Goodbye, stage one. Right. <laughs> um. It's kind of like when Eddie Murphy uh, talked about his conversation with Bill Cosby, and then Bill Cosby called him. He said, "You cannot curse at your shows." Right, 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 right. And, and he goes, "Like you cannot say all oh, flip, fi- uh, Phil, flarm, flarm, Phil." He's like, "I did not just say Phil, flarm, flarm, Phil. I right. said that, 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 that." <laughs> and you know what? I'm offended. You called me. Right, 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 right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So in that sense, um, yeah, I think with it being such a scary time now that um, there's such a thing as triggering somebody. There's such a thing as gaslighting somebody. Right. And sometimes a term of endearment or a term that you grew up with colloquially you know, for for the culture could really send somebody off a deep end. You're like, ooh. Right. It's like, okay, okay. It's like, nene, nee, please get down from the. <laughs> come down, come right, down. No, right, no, right. no, 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 brinque. Don't jump. Right. Come down. 100%. And then, and then you'd be like, you know what? The white the covaso mean a mesutate. I'm scared. I'm <laughs> right. <laughs> I, you don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> exactly. And um, yeah. And it's interesting how. Like colorism and racism have been separated somewhat, but then they're kind of becoming almost the same thing, but not truly really the same. Right, thing. right. I think, yeah. you know, when people talk about, you know, getting rid of racism, getting rid of colorism, I don't think that's ever going to happen because they're, they evolve, you know? Oh, yeah. The racism 50 years ago that people face is not the same racism that no, no, that no, people no. face today. And I think that like as a concept, we are trying to change the racism. We're, we're trying to change, we're trying to fix the racism that happened 50 years ago that mm-hmm. no one's really facing today. Exactly. It's like, well, there's that and also, um outside of the USA, um oh. like for example for colorism, let's say mm-hmm. there's so many countries that that boils down to. And then the media, forget it. The media, you know. Right. And race is so different. Yeah. Depending on where you go, the concept of race yeah. is completely different. I know people were getting really upset about this South African singer who was maybe like two three shades lighter than me that didn't consider herself black because the concept of race in South Africa is so different. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. 